Welcome to our algebra video on consecutive numbers, or in this case, consecutive integers. Now, consecutive means one after the other, and an integer is a positive or negative whole number, right? Integers could equal zero or one or negative one or two or negative two and, and so forth. So an example of a, of a group of consecutive integers would be something like 1, and then 2 is the next consecutive in integer, and then 3, and 4, and so forth. But this, you know, you could pick any set of consecutive integers anywhere. You could start at negative 2, go up to negative 1, that has to be the next consecutive integer, right? There's nothing in between, and then 0, and 1, and 2, and so forth. Right, so we can start anywhere. Typically, you'll get some problem telling you what the sum of these consecutive integers is equal to, and you have to find one or more of the numbers that make that sum. So for example, they might tell you that you have five consecutive integers, and they might tell you that the sum of those integers is equal to some number. Let's pick, let's pick 90 and see what happens. So your goal is to find out what those five consecutive integers are, like what are they, and, and if they add to 90, how do you do that? Well, the, the typical approach, especially since we're focusing on algebra here, is to pick your first number as something. In this case, x, right? Whatever our integers are, they have to start somewhere. And if you look at what consecutive integers are, regardless of where we start, Right? If we start at 1 and go up to the next consecutive number, or if we start at 3 and go to the next consecutive, or if we start at negative 1 and go up to the next consecutive integer, we're always going up 1. Right? 3 to 4 is 1, 1 to 2 is 1, negative 1 to 0, also 1. So if we start at any, any integer, if you want to find the next one that's consecutive, we add 1. So our first integer could be x, then the next one will be whatever that integer is, plus 1. And we keep doing this, right, because we have 5 of them. So the next one will be 2 more than your first integer, and of course 1 more than the one before it. And our goal here is to always use x in each of these representations, so we only have one variable to work with. So keep going with this, we have x plus 3 and then x plus 4. So here are the representations of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 integers. <clears throat> and we know they add up to 90. So let me just um, move this over a little bit and get my eraser. Because really, let's just add these, right? Set them up in an equation. We add up each of these terms and say the sum of these things equals 90. And then we're going to solve for x. Because really, this is just a basic algebra equation. Oops, wrong pen width there. Let me fix that. Okay, so this is going to equal 90, right, if we add up all these terms. So how do we simplify this? Well, let's, let's just count the number of x's. Let's start there. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. So we add those like terms, and I'll write it up here. We have 5x. And then let's add the numbers up. We have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And what's that? Well, 3 and 4 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 more is 10. So 5x plus 10 equals 90. Now we just solve for x. And if we subtract 10 from both sides, right, what happens? Well, this cancels out. That's 0. 90 minus 10 is 80. And 80 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5, right? Over here, 5 divided by 5 is just 1. It cancels out. And what is what is 80 divided by 5? Well, I know 5 times 12 is 60. And 60 is 20 away from 80. So I need 4 more 5s, right, to make up that 20. So x is not equal to 12 here, but 12 plus 4, or 16. So in this case... That means our first integer is 16, and then the second one would be 17, right, 16 and 17, and then 18, right, because we start with x or 16, 16 plus 2 is 18, 16 plus 3 is 19, and 16 plus 4 is 20, 
and let's just test this out. What happens if we add 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 20? Do we get 90? I hope we do here. So, so 9 and 8 is 17, right? 6 and 7 is 13. Adding up 13 and, and 17, we get 30, right? And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 3 is 7, 8, 9. So if we add these up, we do get 90. So in that case, we're able to do it. Another variation they might, they might ask is consecutive numbers <clears throat> that are even or odd. So we'll look at both cases. So let's say you're given that we have five consecutive, we'll pick five again, why not? Five consecutive even numbers. And you know that their sum is equal to 190. So the sum of five consecutive even numbers is 190. What do we do now? Well, again, we want to start with some number. But if you think about even numbers, right, let's say we pick the number 2. Well, the next consecutive even number will be the next even number on the list. And how far away is that? Well, the next even number is 4, and that's 2 away from 2. And the next even number after that is 6, and then 8. And you notice there's always a gap of 2 in between any pair of even numbers. So we can represent that here with algebra. If we start with something x, right, to add the next consecutive even number, it would be x, not plus 1 this time, but plus 2. All right, that would be 2 greater than whatever number you pick. And that's, that's pretty much the structure of even numbers. They're always 2 apart. And we keep going. The next consecutive even number will now be 4 greater than the original number. And again, that's just 2 more, or you can think of it as x plus 2 plus 2, which is x plus 4. We keep going, we get x plus 6, and then one more, we get x plus 8. And the sum of these numbers gives us 190. So now we can simplify, don't be intimidated by these parentheses here, right? If I add up the x's, again, there's 5 numbers here, so I have 5 x's. And I'm going to add 2 to 4 to get 6, and 6 more is 12, and then 8 is 20. So 5x plus 20 equals 190. And now we solve for x, right? Subtract 20 from both sides. This cancels out. We get 5x equals 170. And now we divide both sides by 5, right? On this side, the 5s cancel out. And here, this might seem like a nasty problem, but remember, try friendly numbers like 30 here. 5 times 30, just like 5 times 3, is 150. And, well, well, 170 is 20 more than that, so instead of 30, I'm going to need another 4, which is 20, to get 170. So 5 times 30 and 4, or 34, is 170. In other words, x is going to equal 34. And we could, we could plug that in here, and, and if we did, it would work out, right? 34 is our first number, plus 36, right, which is x plus 2, or 34 plus 2, plus 38, which is 34 plus 4. And then we keep going, we have 40 and 42. I'll leave it to you, you, you can test it out. Add these up, you should get 190, because I want to get to one last example here. What if you're told that you have five consecutive odd numbers? So five consecutive odd numbers, right, that sum or add up to, let's say, 195. And I think the confusing part here is that you're, you're tempted to treat odd numbers differently than even because you know they have to be different, right? Evens and odds, we can't represent them or we feel like we cannot represent them in the same way. Because remember, with evens, what we did was we took a number x and then added 2 to get the next even, and then added 2 after that to get another, sorry, and we added another 2 to get the next even, and so forth. So you might be feeling like this is not something you can do here because you have an odd number. But in fact, you can. You just do the same thing. And the reasoning is here is that you don't have to worry about designating our first starting value x as even or odd. In this problem, we're told that the sum is 195. 
we're told that there are five consecutive numbers that are odd and that add to 195. So here, we're assuming the starting value is odd. That's the only difference. It's an assumption. And it will work out because the sum here is also odd. And if you notice something about even numbers, it's not possible to add up even numbers right, and get an odd result. That's not possible. Right? Try any, try any pair, like 4 and 6. That would give you 10, which gives you an even result, right? Because an even plus an even is always an even. In other words, um, even if you tried to set this up so these were even numbers, there would be no solution, right? Because our answer is odd. So whether it's odd or even, just remember that numbers like odd and even numbers are two apart, right? Just like with the even numbers, if I look at odds, like 1 and 3 and 5 and 7 and 9 and so forth, each of these odd numbers, these are odd numbers, are two, are two apart. So as long as we assume our starting value is odd, we're okay. So what do we do? Well, let's add the x's up. Again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. And again, we have, well, 2 and 4 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20. And now that equals 195. Subtract 20 from both sides. And this time we get 5x, oops, 5x equals 175, not 170. And this problem is nice and easy for us, right? Because we just solved for 170. So we know here there's one more 5 in 175. And x can't equal 34 this time, but 35. So notice that first number that we get for x is 35. So this is 35, right? And 37. You see how if you start with an odd, it keeps building up and stays odd. And then 39 and 41 and 43. And I'll leave that to you. If you if you add these five consecutive odd numbers up, you will get 195. All right. I hope this helped.